An absolutely massive Halo Infinite news drop just came for us, guys. The Inside Infinite update has come out, giving us a time frame when we can expect the first Infinite flight, what's the content within it, and what is 343 expecting from the insiders. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So in a surprise news drop from 343, they actually released the Inside Infinite update essentially a week early. Usually they do the last Thursday of every month, but they just couldn't wait and they uploaded it now. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the TLDR of everything you need to know from that blog update. So if you guys enjoy these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe so let's get right into the content here. As a reminder, there will be timestamps along with this video if you want to skip along to exactly the points you want to know, but everything within this blog update is very important for you to know. So first, to give us a bit of information on what platforms to expect the flight on, who's going to get invited, and the current status of the build of the flight and the game itself. They said that they're looking to have a rather even distribution of Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, as well as PC configurations as well, but they also did mention that they're looking to prioritize the long-standing insider. So I'm assuming if you've been part the MCC flights, you'll most likely get invited to these Halo Infinite flights as well. But they also mentioned that not every single insider is going to get an invitation, early on at least. They mentioned how they wanted to walk before they ran essentially. But they also hint at more flights coming in later on this summer. They also talk about the current status of this build that we're going to be playing and also the current status of the game itself. They said right now it's beyond the alpha stage where it's definitely much more functional but not quite beta because it doesn't have the, quite the polish that they want for the beta experience. And the builds that we will be playing for the technical previews are a few months behind the current main build of Halo Infinite. The two main subjects that they're really looking at information from is the game and the service and performance that they have for the game. So things like stability, online services, like they're interconnected things like matchmaking, server scaling, playlists and challenges, stats, battle pass progression, basically everything they kind of just all supposed to work together. Do they actually do that? As well as an experience with the new Halo Waypoint app and website. And they're also looking to take in in some constructive feedback from the community as well of how the game actually plays like the core gameplay like player movement weapon balance equipment and things like that maps and modes academy weapons and drills which you will be getting into later in this video as well as just general ui experience and like how intuitive things are they also do mention though if you have any bugs, don't just go make a ranting video on YouTube. Don't go to Twitter saying whatever bad experience you had. If you have some kind of bug you want to report, make sure you go to the Halo support site and submit a ticket there. Much like we did with the MCC flights, we're doing the same thing for Halo Infinite. Okay guys, here's the nitty gritty information. The upcoming technical preview. What's going to be in this preview? It might disappoint some of you guys, but I think it's a good start and I'll tell you why later on in this video. It said that the first preview that we're going to be having is a a bot focused slice and also a nuke academy experience as well basically what we'll be doing is playing 4v4 bot matches and these bots come in four different levels of difficulty recruit marine odst and sporting you can probably assume which one's the most difficult one and we'll play in bot arena matches as well on three different maps bazaar recharge and live fire they also mentioned that they're looking to have a daily content offering as well along with the fights per day just to keep people at active in playing these fights because a lot of times we've experienced with the MCC that when the flight first happens a lot of people hop on they'll play for a couple times and then hop off they want to keep people playing so this content offering a daily value will be great they also did say that they were looking to expand future flights for like pvp arena and big team battle as well and the feedback that they want for this flight specifically is obviously arena gameplay versus bots how does that feel for you guys arena maps just in general, academy weapon drills, which is another section of this first technical preview, menus, as well as the experience with the new Halo Waypoint. Now the Weapon Academy is the next section we're going to be talking about here, which is part of this flight, and it's a pretty interesting thing. It's the first time we've ever had this kind of like a place where we can test out and play around with weapons. They actually gave us a list of all the weapons that are going to be playable within this flight. We have the MA-40 Assault Rifle, the BR-75, MK-50 Sidekick, the Bulldog, Needler, Commando, Sniper Rifle, Plasma Pistol, the Pulse Carbine, the Ravager, Heat Wave, and Skewer. It said that the way that this will essentially work is that if you 
load into the weapon drills, essentially what will happen, you'll see a bunch of AI Spartans kind of pop up in front of you. You shoot them, the more you take down, the higher points you get. So it's gonna be a great way to become acclimated with all these new weapons and also these familiar weapons that might act a little different than what you've previously known. We're also gonna get a chance to play around with the battle pass, challenges, menus, and customization as well within this flight. They even stated that they're gonna be granting us some in-game currency so that we could play around with like the experience of buying new pass levels, buying new items, and things like that for customization's sake, but they do mention that none of these customizations that you unlock within the technical preview will not carry over to the release of Halo Infinite. But also keep in mind that this is like gonna be an actual like truncated battle passes as they mentioned, kind of a smaller fraction of what the full thing is gonna be like. And like what we mentioned previously, there will be a Halo Waypoint flight going alongside with this as well, where you can download the new app as well and experience the new website. So you can see how your progression of a Spartan continues on beyond just the gameplay itself. You can see how your stats, your unlocks, your battle pass and the progression and things like that are done on Halo Waypoint. We'll know more. When we get a chance to play it and lastly when will we get a chance to play this bot focused technical preview well they said here specifically that the bot focused technical preview could happen as soon as next weekend Prior to the flight starting, we're planning a live stream where we'll dive into the actual build and walk through nearly every facet of the technical preview. Okay, so I have some opinions on this as well. I'm sure a lot of people are actually probably disappointed at the fact that we'll be playing against bots for our first impression when it comes to playing Halo Infinite, which is very understandable because I had this opinion as well. We're like, okay, well, I was expecting it to be like a 4v4 kind of experience between actual players, not bots. Because I highly doubt that no matter how good of the AI is within a bot, it's not gonna act like a true player. They did mention that these higher level bots like ODSTs and sparring level bots will be picking up equipment, will be dodging your shots and doing some rather difficult maneuvers. Joseph Staten even mentioned within the development update that he was doing like the dance moves that you play within Halo against these higher level bots because they know how to play Halo essentially through AI. But this is gonna be everyone's first impression of playing. I think we all kind of had the expectation that it'd be like an eight person lobby that we'd be playing 4v4 against. Though on the other hand, it does seem to be kind of like a good way, like they mentioned previously about wanting to walk before they run. Having 4v4 players might be a bit of a run right now when it comes to the matchmaking within Halo Infinite. So starting off with bots is kind of like the appetizer before eating the entree, if you know what I mean. So when those other flights come around that we're gonna have for, for PvP arena and also big team battle, that more people would still want to keep playing those sequential flights because think of it like this say they jumped in first flight is a 4v4 eight player battle right that's gonna be fantastic and then say like the next flight it's gonna be like four players versus bots and they want to test that out how many people are thinking of replaying the bots not that many because the previous experience playing against strictly players was much more engaging so this might actually be the better play by 343 to make sure they have as many people as possible playing these flights because with anything the second and third and fourth variations of something will have a lower return on player retention that or maybe just eight player pvp right now is kind of difficult to run right now with this pre-beta phase of Halo Infinite, but this also will be a great way to have players become acclimated to the new mechanics that are going to be in Infinite as well. They won't be stressing so much just trying to not be a burden to their team and doing so poorly. When you're playing against bots, most likely these will not be as good as actual players, which means you have more time to relax, a more relaxing environment to get a chance to be more acclimated to the new weapons, equipment, and mechanics of Halo Infinite, so then when the 4v4 eight player lobbies come around you'll be up and ready to go of course then this is going to be people's first impressions though and so you always want to make a really good first impression and that this might not be the best first impression we get of halo infinite but i think in the long term of things and also for just user experience this might be the best way to go about doing it though so if you guys are new to this channel or missed any content from me recently i got a playlist right here to keep you updated with all my halo news and information videos i've been uploading daily so thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.